Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Championship Sunday. Of course, just two more games to go, a semi-final and of course our grand final. Uh, but Chance, I feel like we should just quickly talk about that last series. Florida, again, getting the better of the Huntsman. Uh, the kryptonite, I guess. Like, only two losses Chicago has had so far this entire year, and Florida's responsible for both of them. An interesting game as well, because it was a lot of just fundamental mistakes kind of coming in from Chicago towards the end, just not properly holding spawns and rotating us towards the end of that game. Oh, yeah, of course, uh, but moving on, of course, the second semifinal that we'll see is our uh, home team, if you will, the Dallas Empire in action. I'm excited because just we haven't really casted them that much uh, at all this weekend or just in general throughout the season. So excited to finally have some Dallas love for me and you but we'll take a look at our game fuel keys to victory for them focus on shutting down god rx that's been a common theme for everyone against minnesota rocker as uh, of course he is a difference maker for them but one of the key players that i think we both can agree on today who might make a difference for minnesota is actually going to be a scene Hey, agreed. Uh, Asim has been a freak. I mean, ordinarily, it's like Alex uh, of the subs that has the better stats between the two. But while he hasn't been quite a standout, Asim has absolutely picked up that slack. Normally has around like a 0 .9, 0 .95. And I think now, this weekend, he's sitting at like a 1.11. So Asim finds the form. When he and in regards to game fuel keys to victory for the Minnesota Rocker, last time we saw this series, they lost both of the search and destroys. Uh, really, I guess the key is just win one of them and you should be A-OK. -okay. But Search and Destroy hasn't been fantastic for the Minnesota Rocker. Of course, they had a 5-0 advantage against Chicago earlier in the tournament before allowing the Huntsman to win six rounds in a row. Another full sale to go down in Call of Duty Esports history. Uh, so I don't know how confident I am in terms of Minnesota Rocker in their search chance. Well, I, I will say, though, I think that's where, like, the pick and bans actually come into effect, like, quite well. It just, they mix and match. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, yes, they lost both the Search and Destroys in Dallas last time. They get two new maps into play. And then we talk about the keys to victory. So many times, I don't even know what it means when it says try to shut a player down. But this time, it actually <laughs> clicks for me. If you want to shut down God RX, because the two Search and Destroys we're going to play, it's going to be Piccadilly and then Arclaw of Beak. You know God RX is going to be yes. sniping. You know roughly where he's going to be sniping from, especially so on Arclaw of Beak. So in those situations, you shut him down in those searches, and Dallas gets both of those potential victories. Obviously, they'll win the yeah, series. Completely agree, Chance, of course. Uh, as I said, it's our first time this weekend casting our home team in Dallas Empire. It feels only right to introduce you to the Dallas Empire here on Championship Sunday. First chance, Dallas Empire, formidable force. Uh, and again, I have to reiterate, I'm excited to finally get casted. Uh, absolutely. And again, those are your returning champs as well. They won the most recent event. And when you're looking even towards the future, both of these teams originally just wanted that revenge against Chicago, but now they'll be staring down the barrel of Florida potentially towards the end. And a storyline we've been running, not just for Dallas, who have already won that tournament for them, is whether or not Minnesota is going to be able to grab the uh, grab one right. this year. And I think yesterday or the other day, you said it's not a question of if, but when, then it might just be yeah, there. Yeah, potentially, of course. Uh, it's not going to be easy, though, because Dallas Empire have been treating uh, the what looks like some comfortable results. Could have said the same thing about the hunt them but of course uh, as you mentioned florida get the better of them booking their ticket into today's final but luckily for us game number one about to get underway no delays it looks like we're going straight into a ramaza hot point and again, it was noted Minnesota and the Pickin' Bands made sure they focused extra hard on the Search and Destroy because they lost both of those maps to Dallas last time around. But Ramaza is a repeat, and it's one that Dallas beat them quite handily on 250 to 181, which is a very respectable lead in this game. So Minnesota, they let it through. They have to have something cooked up and prepared to try to take Dallas down. Dude, game number one. Officially underway, and we're going to start things off on board with God Rx, of course, in our game for keys to victory. Uh, D for Dallas Empire is shutting him down, slowing him down as much as he possibly can. He's been in a, a nice little rhythm, good form, of course, but uh, already he's been in Dallas Empire drawing the first kills, and more importantly for them, on the first kill. 
Well, you got God or X watching it cross. You got Assault actually inside of the hole trying to rack up the time. And he's got quite a bit of clearance. You see Dallas right now are being super careful to make sure that no one extends around the map because we've seen a lot of speed players in the box going around to get those spawns. So until they get that information, they're not going to pour all the pressure into the hard point. For now, at least hard point still just going back to the coast in the early few moments. The seam inside, place that top three will find the pick. And again, keep your eye on that mini map. Now you can see that Dallas Empire wants to allow anyone to see through. But there is going to be a fight on the bottom side of your screen. It's number three, God RX from Minnesota Rocker, who I believe did just find who. That could be a massive win for Minnesota Rocker early here their way through sometimes they just talk their way through but shots he's able to hunt him down but god rx's teammates were there for the trade shout out to result by the way got off to a very hot start 6 0 before he finally falls well his teammates are making sure that they can win that rotation battle because there's only one man alive in the hill for dallas who gets dealt with in very credit in terms of results and kills and death but also uh, everybody was getting those kills whilst inside the hill 34 seconds of hill time but where she is in p1 as clayster tries to peek through front door so far, it's going pretty well for Minnesota Rockets. Looking for the seventh point lead. Plenty of time left though. Here on P2, they try to just sneak and contest as much as he can, but unfortunately for him, Goderek sniffs out the danger. He finds himself too. Alex gets two as well. Minnesota Rocker trying to get into a nice little rhythm here, Chance. Seems like the Rocker just have better vision through the smoke. You see <laughs> Dallas Shotzi, he is just turning and running. They're trying to get spawns for new and he's hunting players down, but that's because Minnesota Rocker, while getting all that strap time, we're putting pressure on the rotation as well. So the good news for Dallas, they handle the rotation perfectly. They sniff all those players from the Rocker out and kill them. The downside, though, is down by more than six. I think it's going to be important as well when we talk about keys to victory for Minnesota Rocker. In Really every single game that they're going to play, regardless of game type, for them to start off strong and keep that momentum. Too many times uh, you hear us say they're a very resilient team, and mainly the reason we're saying that is because they fall so far behind at times, especially in the game, 50, 60 points, maybe even more sometimes, uh, and they fight their way back. I mean, if you start with the advantage chance, and you keep that pressure run, uh, it just makes hard work so much easier. Makes hard point easier, especially when you're getting kills like that. Good lord, shots. You don't even bother an ADS again. You try to ADS in that gunfight, it's not going to pan out. Just hit fire. Doesn't matter if he's 200 feet away. There's nothing to drop him, but good lord, what a kill and a decent kill, by the way, for the Dallas Empire. Necessary one as well. They had to make sure they get that rotation and they cut that, what, 60, mm -hmm. 70 point deficit. All the way to a, a little bit more most of a, about a 20. Keep your eye on the minimap here, right? You see what the Minnesota Rucker have done. One player, Silly, is rotated all the way to near bottom construction. Everyone else still trying to keep as much map pressure as possible, forcing Dallas Empire to spawn so far out. It's going to take them at least 10, 15 seconds just to traverse the map to get even close to the hill. As long as they don't allow someone to sneak through, who may be that player. Silly's going to have no idea, but still wins the fight just in the nick of time. Minnesota Rocker good for the first 20 seconds. Uh, and honestly, Dallas still spawning pretty far out. And sometimes we say sneak through. Sometimes he just walks yeah. straight up the middle of the map before he gets there. But either way, he is going to be dealt with. Dallas Empire struggling to win these breaks. Honestly, I haven't been able to break a single hole this entire game. The only time they've gotten a rotation note, they were successful at holding. But at the moment, just getting bullied out straight on the battles and again the Dallas Empire nice and spread across the map they can already feel it they're getting no love on the construction the rocker and this is going to be important here for Dallas Empire to do really what they did in P3 get a ton of time just to make a little bit of a comeback you cannot get broken quickly and keep your eyes on number five on that mini map that's going to be silly he was in a position to maybe try and make the play instead he falls the playmaker could be a seam Clay shuts that down Dallas Empire with a little bit of control Dallas Empire had a nice little map where they made a ton of pressure towards the middle of the map. So you got Clay's who actually, he's playing this passively, but not entirely necessary. There wasn't any pressure coming, but he's going to let those players get close to jump over the wall before he fights them. Meanwhile, his teammates again. Chess, I know you pointed out the salt stat line after the first hill. Look at him now, 18 and 4. Almost two minutes hill time. A minute 41 just by himself. Assault having a great start, but can he keep up that pace? That's the question. Wait and see. Assault now flies inside the hill. Smokes are out. He can't see a thing. Teammates looking to trade, although so far, unsuccessfully. Dallas Empire still in the hill. The final 10 seconds back to them. Despite Minnesota Rocker pulling out about a 50 60 point lead a couple of times in our first rotation overall, Dallas Empire keep it close. And so far, the story of the game is that no team 
Ryan's able to break through on a hill. Whoever's won that rotation has been locking down the hill for a few amount of time. John Rex not doing himself any favors with those days and actually is to back down on that door, which means players from the Empire, they're going to sneak through and get inside a bottom construction and again, trying to set up those rotations for later on. Seconds left our first hill, and of course the difference really here between our first rotation and this one. Now at least, no one from Minnesota Warcraft has been able to break through and dictate spawns. Of course, they were able to do that earlier. Look for them to really have one good push at the spawns. Maybe just leave the hill in about that final 20 seconds. With how back and forth this game has been, the chance to your point with teams not really breaking with much success so far. Locking down the early time on all these hard points is so important. And really, this is the first that we've seen broken golf over there on P1. Got a wreck. Now, of course, on the break for the rotation. Minnesota through the smoke. They sent four, and Haley's going to find a couple, and Huke is there to clean up the rest, and Clayster gets number five. The teamwork right there on point for the Empire to put the stamp on the rotation. And again, they've been fantastic at holding the hills. That's not here for Minnesota. Just trying to try and flood the hill. Of course, and then Haley and Huke both find two. Dallas Empire still inside the hill trying to defend. Finally, a break. But how long in he goes? Who can he find a second? Unfortunately, no. It's Alex that finds that pick. And again, the constant sequence of trades back and forth, back and forth. But again, it's Illy inside the hill. He'll find one. Got a Rex may fall as well if he's too careful. Nades, of course, being launched out of time. Picking again. Minnesota Rocker want to keep the pressure on. And bear in mind the reason behind that is they're already rotated across the map, waiting for the new hill to pop. This is where it seems like quite a few of these young players on the Dallas Empire starting to heat up a little bit. Their job, just kill everything in sight. Waste no time. Again, like we saw at the start of the year from the Empire, there were times where they thought they made the best of the guys. Like, that's completely flipped out the window, and they just want him to go and get kills. But obviously, Alex needs to be dealt with as well. Now the rotation, got a Rex. Gets trapped, that tunnel wide open for and the Empire. And knows he's going to have a lot of pressure coming through. One kill coming his way. Shots in the wrist for the trade. The assault goes down. I believe the uh, uh, assault statistically still having a great game, but this is now really where we're coming crunch time in game one. About to be all tied up with 30 seconds left on this hill. Got a wrench trying to watch the cross, make sure that his teammates inside the hill were A-OK. -okay. Not going to be a case. He will fall. Alex now looking to defend from the front. Plays the attention to the right. Grim as well, putting pressure, but a nice gunfight from assault. He deals with one. Not going to find the others. Go on board. Salt is going to keep going out. They're going to come in through that side of the front door. Well, his teammates with the subs are going to be there to be the cleanup crew. Final seven seconds going the way to Minnesota Rocker, who have bumped up their lead to just about 20 points. Now they're going to have to fight through once again. And as absurd as the Salt stats have been so far this entire game, still the Rocker have been struggling to break through on these hills. And of course, the Empire, you can see, not even to the old or new hill first. Yes, they got one man there, but pushed up so aggressively. They have to get past play, get past Huke in the middle of the map, just for those two players to come off respawn and get those gun fights. Yeah, exactly what Minnesota Rocket did in the first rotation. Dallas Empire just do it right back at the entire game. Again, new change, advantage Dallas Empire. Still 30 seconds of this hill left. Of course, Dallas cannot win it here. We will see at least another hill. The question though, can Minnesota Rocker break quickly? A scene from downstairs has the support of Assault. Does he want to push through the backside? Probably not. You don't want to influence your spawns negatively, knowing you have to cross the map once again. 10 seconds left. Alex could be the playmaker Minnesota Rocker need. Yes, they have an advantage, but chance this is such a small. This could be the hill where the Rocker can just win the game. The Empire have to make sure they stay on point and probably just gonna have to force the rotation. So Empire, they have to think about those two things. Win this hill and then win the rotation after that because it's not gonna be likely that they're gonna rack up all this time without some contesting coming through. So Shazi, player's able to get through the back just for the moment. He's going hunting. He has no idea. Silly jumped out through the cracks. He's gonna make the play and he found one. Silly finds two. That could be the difference maker to maybe close map number one out in Minnesota Rockers at favor, but unfortunately, Silly still playing time. His teammates weren't able to win their fight, but Silly pop it off towards the end, and Minnesota can win it here, but Silly's gonna need at least a little bit more support, or is he? He's doing it all himself. A four streak currently is the pressure currently being applied by Dallas Empire. They have to contest. They have to get inside the hill, but Minnesota Rocker, they're still there, and bear in mind at this point, you also have to worry about the rotation. Another final push comes in from Goddard He'll find one. They can't win it here. It's a foot race to P1.
It's a foot race to new, but look at the kill feed. The Rocker are dominating the Empire. They have one man that's even going to be close. And Assault is posted up inside the hill. Doesn't need to move. And the Rocker sealed the deal. Silly going big towards the end. He had one play to make. And he made it next. I mean, he just bam boozles Dallas Empire towards the end. The hard point, of course, contested. Dallas wondering where he went. Not sure. Silly puts himself in a nice little corner, waits pretty much the perfect amount of time before his teammates put pressure from the front hill. Then he pounces into action. He gets a double, continues that streak on, ranks four or five in a row. Silly, the difference maker at the end for Minnesota Rocker. And it's absurd as well because we're watching on board with Shotzi, right? And Shotzi is cracked. He is watching 17 different things at the same time in a situation where they just needed him to watch one. The only thing that was open was the side of that tunnel. Everything else was covered. Shotzi had teammates that were pushed up towards the front, and he's sitting there essentially watching the same thing that his teammates can already see. By the time he figures it out and doubles over is exactly when Silly comes through. So it's COD timing at its finest. It's Silly making the perfect play at the perfect time. And again, just enough for the Rocker to seal the deal on a map that Dallas had beaten them on previously. So already the Minnesota Rocker feeling great about the credit to assault that stat line is uh it's borderline yeah. stupid to be honest 38 kills 15 deaths just just that alone is incredibly impressive then you uh, you see two minutes 29 hill time as well chance nine defends uh, assault just basically said don't worry guys i'll sit in the hill if you can do everything else it'll make my life a lot easier but of course as we mentioned silly towards the end of game one definitely a, a factor there to minnesota rocker's success and of course winning map one I mean, I think as far as at least clean breaks go, there's always like a lot of scrappiness going on, but maybe three hills were broken by whatever team doesn't yeah. get there first, two of which were by the Rocker. One of the times, obviously, was Silly being sneaky, but that's why Salt's stat line so great, because anytime the Rocker got to the hill first, they were just able to get their full setup, and the Empire could never find a way to break through. So he gets to just hang out, be the human turret, live inside the hill, and just kill whatever scraps his teammates leave. We'll take a look at our scuff gaming play of the game. Uh, I feel it's only right to give that to silly in the way that the map number one came to a conclusion with him just again sneaking being smart being uh patient i i feel is probably the, the best way of explaining that play chance yes yeah, cerebral right because you like all the time in call of duty you just want to go and kill things you want to get to the hill as quick as possible and when you have a hill like that you're already in a good spot your team is maybe 30 points from winning and you know as long as you get a couple kills the empire can't win it there and then you can just force the rotation like silly has 18 ways he can play it he makes the smartest possible play ignores all the gunfights initially waits still he is in the perfect position and then even waits till his teammates get there as well and as soon as his teammates have pressure from the side in the front then he starts shooting those players in the back i think picks up what two kills before he gets traded but again just completely opens up the map for his team times it perfectly and that's the veteran play that we expect well, advantage minnesota rocker they go 1-0 up but as we mentioned in our uh, game fuel keys to victory they're uh, I guess faulting was uh, the search and destroy the last time these two teams played. Of course, it was Dallas Empire that took both. Um, you expect to see a big focus and shift be for Minnesota Rocker to really focus in on those searches. And in terms of the maps, I believe that map two is going to be Piccadilly. Do you feel more confident uh, with Piccadilly here now, Minnesota Rocker? So... Well, I would say first, as a default, I always trust Dallas and Search and Destroy. I always outright think they're going to be good. But when you go to this map specifically for Minnesota Rocker, absolutely, I trust them. They're 3-0 and on this okay. map, and two of those three wins, they've taken down FaZe. Like, if you remember at the very start of the year, FaZe went on, I think, a, a six or seven game run in Search and Destroy where they're obliterating mm -hmm. every single they're like team. like 12-0 in I rounds. Even on Piccadilly. Yeah, I was about to say, on Piccadilly, they like 6-0 the New York subliner, 6-1 someone else. Like, they were dominant. In Minnesota Rock, we're the first team to really take it to them on that map. It's when Goderek starts doing flashy stuff with his snipe. So they're undefeated on it. Two of their three wins come against arguably the best team in the game, if not the second best team in the game. So I'm feeling great about the okay. Rocker on this. Fair map. enough. Of course, it is uh, advantage Minnesota Rocker so far in the series. But as we mentioned, this isn't the first time we've seen these two teams play against each other this season. I want to take a look now back at what we saw in L.A. Yet the one final push for one final contest. The tournament is decided here. They got a kill. And Illy's there up top. They got him out of the hard point. Got him they out. might still be able to They're get there. in. They're they there. gotta fly. Go, go, go. Get in. They're able to get in. Everybody is into the point. 247. 
247. Inside. It's madness they inside. It. Rocker, oh, they, they it. do it. They do it. They do it. It's Rocker with the win. It's Map 5, baby. What just happened? What was that ending? Of course, that series chance was a crazy one, and I'm kind of hoping we get another crazy series here, Chance. I mean, hopefully. The game fives are always going to be clutch. They're always a, a fun time. And, of course, the way we saw that series play out last time, it was actually Dallas that won the Ramaza and goes on to win the game five in the end. So now Minnesota a lot more comfortable. They started out a little bit differently. But even if we do see a game five, again, the two search and destroys Minnesota make sure to mix up the bag just a little bit more. We get two fresh looks for them. However, of course, again, Dallas is very comfortable in every search. Yeah, they are very comfortable as, as much as it's uh, – exciting and uh, maybe very easy for Minnesota Rocker fans to get ex you know ahead of themselves I guess in, in terms of this series uh Dallas great search and destroying team chance I mean you mentioned it briefly uh but but overall this season they've looked great in the game mode I mean it's one of those things right just even you look at the guys they have on the team plays are trim veterans great good for them we expect them to be good at everything at this point but even like Shotzi that's the player if anything you'd expect to be the weakest on this team because he spent the least amount of time in Call of Duty well, pretty much all last year, all he was doing was grinding Search and Destroy. He's been playing against some of the best Search and Destroy players for a year and a half now at this point. So he's going to be most experienced in this game mode, and that is with the collective of insane teammates. And that is a very strange-looking Search and Destroy map that I'm staring at, Ben. It's, uh, yeah. I've seen Piccadilly a couple times, and boy, I tell you. Okay, I'm assuming the stream doesn't see this. No, They're just doing a, a, a server, server test. test. Yeah. Yeah, they loaded up Team Deathmatch on Hackney Yard, and I was like, wait a minute, that does not seem right. That does not look like Piccadilly. But again, Dallas Empire, again, great Search and Destroy team. The guy who's least experienced has the most experience in Search and Destroy. Illy's been doing this I since he was born. It, it seems <laughs> like he's always been around. And Huke is one of the guys that I think, honestly, might be tied with the, the kill record for most kills in Search overall, and he might be tied with Krim. Well, shout out to our observers doing a uh, fantastic job as well. I feel like they often don't get as much love as they so deserve of course working from home for everyone including the production staff as well shout out to those guys a whole different uh dynamic that's for sure compared to doing this at a live event but whilst we wait for game number two to get underway we're gonna a quick commercial break we'll be right back with piccadilly search
Palace Empire Minnesota Rocker series currently 1-0 in favor of Rocker. And that first hard point, of course, was a back and forth chance. But at the very end, Minnesota go out and take it. A fantastic performance from Assaults, putting up big numbers and big hill time as well. But at the very end, it was silly that made the play that really impacted the result of map number one. Moving forward, though, we talk about Piccadilly Search and Destroy. I, I hate to, to really harp on it, but for me, this has got our Rex and the Sniper Rifle. If he pulls it out and has success, honestly, you can see them go 2-0 up. And so, of course, you have to imagine the entire game plan from the Empire saying, okay, we know Goddard X is going to snipe. We know roughly where he's going to yep. do it from because, yes, you can be a little bit more creative on Piccadilly. There's a handful of different spots you can, like, get looks for him, but you can sort of systematically eliminate those and just go for straight-up counter snipes. So you know you're going against Goddard X. Whoever wants to pull out the boomstick from Empire can just try to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So I expect the Slugfest. Like, obviously, mm -hmm. Minnesota are great on this map. 3-0, have beaten phases twice. It's all well and good, but at the same time, you show off just enough, then the Empire are going to sit there and try to make counter strats on counter strats, excuse me, on everything imaginable. And then Dallas Empire, 2-2. Two and two. So they have a little bit of experience on it, but enough now, four times, and you have two losses, they're going to be mixing the say, There's well. players that were going to come up with uh, counter strats. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, look over towards Clay and Krim to do just that. And uh, one thing I know we touched on uh, briefly admittedly uh, not a lot was of course that coaching staff rambo ray uh, and how much uh, he can impact the team as well when it comes to strategy i know he took absolutely zero credit from uh, la said no nope, that wasn't me i'd only just really joined but it feels good of course to get a win under your belt regardless but i feel like this is now the effect that we'll, we'll see more maybe uh, ray's coaching strategies if you will start to come into play Absolutely. And also a bigger part of just like the online shift isn't necessarily like online and land. Your gameplay is roughly going to be the same. Yes, sometimes you're pinging differently, whatever it's going to be. But the game still operates in the same way. So it's just tough to make that mental switch of being able to get yourself into that tournament ready mindset when you don't have the crowd in front of you. When you don't travel and hang out with your boys or wherever your team is right. going to be at, it's a lot more difficult to have that happen. That's where the coaches, in my mind, really come into effect of just bumping up your team and making sure you're keeping them sharp, keeping them focused as much as you can to emulate that. I'll tell you what, if you're the young guys on Dallas Empire, you could, you, you literally couldn't have surrounded yourself with more experience, right? What, no, what do you think about Crip Six Clayster and Rambo Ray as a, as a coach? I mean, when it comes to just kind of settling you down a little bit and even just making you feel more comfortable and understanding the differences between, you know, playing at a live event and playing online, I mean, those three do wonders. They they really will. I mean, talk about the success that Clayster and Krim have seen in online leagues in the past, of course. Like, they know how to win, and they know how to treat it as norm, if you will. Uh, but overall, I'm excited to see uh, Rambo start to develop as a, as a coach. Big big Rambo Ray fan, personally, Chance. I'm going to be honest. The, the man has done it all. He's competed. He was an analyst as well uh, on the desk. Part of the talent staff will always be uh, missed in that role, but it's exciting to see a new chapter for him. Uh, either way, though, game number two about to get underway that search and destroy piccadilly i'm just, i'm gonna cut you off for a moment just to talk about how interesting that dynamic must be as well because you might have this situation like for shatili and huk of like they might be getting yelled at by krim one day and then rambo just comes in as like the like the mother <laughs> bird or whatever it is and just call to them and be like hey guys like it's cool don't worry about so, it and be nice and soft or maybe he's no, the hard no. ass and clay hat like who knows what's, man? what's like, really oh. interesting is I, I know um shout out to, to nameless and study that they talked about this a lot uh, often when we refer to, you know, big loser bracket runs way, way back in the day, um, Nameless and Study will both say, obviously, Joe has a big effect on this, Merc, uh, but Rambo, when he was around that team house, we always used to talk about that old Envy team. Rambo was was, was a dad. Like, Ant will come out and say it. Ray, Ray, oh, yeah. Ray taught him so, so much about not just the game, but about life in general. So for the young guys to have someone like Ray around you in that competitive environment, it's going to do them wonders, both in you know, their personal lives, of course, and more importantly, in the game. But Search and Destroy is underway. Enough of our waffle. That cracks it up. We just saw Shotzi do as well. How many times have we seen players get first blooded from a car exploding on many different sides and parts of this Piccadilly map? First thing he does is make sure that he stays safe on top of that car. But of course, over towards the pillars, you see Illy. A couple players were nearby. Apparently, Illy's teammates were driving on the spot. Shotzi and Crim6 able to get a pick a piece. Well, quick glance now over towards Silly's perspective. It's going to be now five versus two. Take advantage of Dallas Empire. Mentioned Goddard X in the snipes. Well, he has it out. 
hasn't had much success just yet in round one. Nothing just yet, and of course all of his teammates are dead, which is not ideal. So perfect opening round coming out from the Empire, and we'll see if it passes over the was a beast in map number one. Crim6, though, make sure he deals with the fear. Make sure to kill the Oh, well, there's the end of round number one. Advantage Dallas Empire. And of course, again, the storyline coming in when we talk about this series chance and it being a, a repeat, one we've already seen in the season. That's the search and destroy. Most of the Rocket had zero success last time they played Dallas Empire in this game mode. And their key to victory today was just try and win one. And if you do, likelihood of you winning this series goes up massively and again one of those keys to victory just shutting down god rx you find him with the sniper you either just challenge and take the sniper gunfight or avoid him at all costs and just kill his teammates one effect. we got god rx with the boomstick out you got smokes in every nade in the game up and already that B-side control empire are surging to try to take very very fast push from Illy as he shuts down a seam who was unable to find one before falling and I'm curious to see at what point if it's unsuccessful will God RX switch out change class say no nope, snipe hasn't worked the first couple of rounds let me put it away of course he is still alive here but bomb is planted and instead of rock with a tough retake here 3v4 and it's a great setup. Got RX with the sniper. He's gonna basically need to find a pick because right out the door, Illy Once these Minnesota Rocket players start revealing themselves, that's where Shotzi and Crim6 come into effect. And already Crim6 dropping the skull, wasting no Bear in mind, he dropped mid to eight. Clay is playing so far mid map that even if his teammates on the bomb do fall, he can hit such a late flank. It's gonna cause all sorts of problems. Now they know where God RX is. He fights one. That's why we talk about him and the sniper. But I don't think big picture is gonna matter what whatsoever 10 seconds on the clock he was inevitable to fall and just a, a beautiful setup and a beautiful open anytime you're trying to go for this b-side control the main thing you want to accomplish on offense is pushing up and not necessarily going into the bookstore but making sure you're on that side of the wall and just watching the cross that way whoever's planting the bomb isn't going to be touchable unless they get flanked or they run out of the bookstore. If you run out of the bookstore, the guy sitting in the corner is going to kill him. So it's In my mind, the round is pretty much done. 2 0 in favor of Dallas Empire. Once again, it looks as if early at least the shows in search versus Dallas Empire. Continuing for Minnesota Rocker Clay with some nice shots cross map. He'll find assault. That's first blood. However, the numbers instantly evened out as further trades come through. This would be two big kills from Silly. Nine above right in front of him, making the perfect flank as well. Opens up the match for Minnesota to get that bounce back round. Placer trying to make it. As sights on God Rx, but God Rx stays alive. And well, now it's tough uh, to make that challenge. Run right back over towards play. 1v3. Always going to be tough, especially when they know exactly where you are. Minnesota Rocker on the board in their first round. Still trailing them. Very quick round as well. I feel like we almost haven't had like a moment to breathe. Every single round, nice and aggressive this time. It was silly. Just going on that full flank and again, wasn't wasting much time to make it happen. Found himself right behind two players on the Empire. And well, that'll pretty much do it for the round. Anytime you get a free double kill on the flank. Just hit a rocker. Now get it. Trying to force uh, going to the defensive here. Chuck the wood carrying bomb for Dallas Empire. Sitting at four and one, six, five and two. Alex defending B though for Minnesota Rocker is now starting to push a little further forward. Do they like what they see though? That's the question. They haven't spotted out too much information. Got a right still with the snipe out, and unfortunately for him, there was no repeat there from Ellie. You can see the effect it had on him actually there from the X-ray vision. He said, "Nope, don't want it." Backs away, but unfortunately for Minnesota Rocker, two players fall. Got Rex does hit one snipe. But again, just not having much success early. Different places that Alex could potentially be though. Players on the cross, he's able to take down one before he gets traded. And Illy deals with a sniper at God Rx, and just like that, over on the blue side. And Silly, well, gives his position away. Yes, he gets the kill. The bomb is down in a one versus two, and well, there goes the nade. Not able to find a kill. Respect it. Fortunately, he doesn't find the kill with the nade, and. Now 1v2 with both players of Dallas 
Well, I've shot the Billy in the back side of the map. Goes out. No shots. He's there and he wins the first. 24 seconds left. He has a rough idea where Illy is. Question is, can Silly win the gunfight? This for a 1v3. Makes his way up to the bomb. Now he knows exactly where Illy is, but he may have to push this with 13 seconds left. He challenges, loses the gunfight anyway. Doesn't matter. Dallas Empire win the round and go 3 1 up. And that's big for Millie as well, making sure he's that catch. That was not a good shot. The only goal right there that the Empire need to accomplish is making sure they waste time. Silly, as soon as he gets spotted by Illy, Shotzi can just throw his shoulder, see him, come back, and waste another few seconds before going out for the challenge because there was just enough time on the clock for Silly to try to make the play. Luckily, though, Illy able to make sure he wins that gunfight in the end. I have a nice little lead on Piccadilly again. Minnesota Rocker might be 3 0 1. We have seen quite a few aggressive threats coming out from the end. Really take it to key factors here for Mr. Rocker struggling in my opinion is that uh, Assault is so good at map number one but he starts off 0-4 here first blood for Krim there's number two makes it look so simple Alex and Asim both fall Silly could be right next in line that is a, a veteran player in Krimzik just the old man Slide making sure he gets all those kills trying to get the ace for himself doing the smart thing Wait to heal before he goes and challenges, and then he does, and Assault's gonna kill him. But hey, he did his job. He found those first three, and I love it as well. I'm so used to watching people just like crash slide around everywhere, do everything at like high speed. Crimson, you know what does he do? L trigger. L trigger and slowly walk around the wall and just pre aim where he knows the next man's gonna be coming from and gets the kill. I love that old school <laughs> style, man. It's nice. Crim just makes it look so simple, just lets the game come to him. That's for sure is another round win for Dallas Empire. The search and destroy was it may uh, not matter really what map these two play against each other. Minnesota Rock is struggling heavily here in game two. Illy watching the cross. Can he hit the shot? Nope. A little delay there. Get about right. First blood either way. He does get traded out. Now just kills all over the map. Illy finds a pick to even things out to a 3v3. And he knows that Alex was nearby that fountain. One was planted as well throughout all of that chaos. We saw Illy just sprint straight towards the site as Hoop deals with Alex. Merkel advantage for Dallas. More trades coming through. Silly left by himself. He will fall. Dallas Empire on cruise control, it seems, in game four. And by far, the Empire's success really just seems to be their aggression. Like, if they were just a second slower of trying to get that bomb down and that man gets naded off before the plant comes, now you just have a stalemate of a round where you go back to playing for picks. And obviously, we know that's where God or X can be such a big threat. But every time on offense, Empire, whether they're going to B, whether they're going to A, hyper aggressive, making the plays as quick as they possibly can. They got a print 10 and 4 right now. from him. First blood for Hook, though. He finds his fourth kill of game two. Silly will drop. We get bombed down, but unfortunately, Alex will fall, as will a seam, as will assault. Got our X for a 1v4. And since the, I think it was like maybe two rounds in, I, I posed the question. At what point, if you've got RX, do you put the sniper rifle away? You may be having individual success, but if it isn't working as a team, at some point you have to adapt. That never came. Not one, not one round did that happen. And Dallas Empire take it six to one. And I think it's just because the Empire didn't give them time to think about it. Exactly. Literally, again, all of these rounds just happen so unbelievably <laughs> fast. That is one of the quicker search and destroys that we have seen so far this year. And the Empire wasted no time. The uh, keys to victory. What shut was down it? Shut down God RX. Give him nothing to work with on the maps where you know he's going to snipe, where he's had success in the past. Take him out of the play. Kill all his teammates beforehand. Make your shots around it. Whether you're smoking him off and nading him out of bookstore and making sure you get all that map control or just killing everyone else first. The Empire, again, as perfect no, as you could possibly It's the ask. perfect way to counter a sniper rifle player, right? You, you obviously respect him a lot in terms of his ability with a sniper rifle. I mean, you smoke out his crosses. He basically becomes useless at the beginning. You kill everyone else on the map. He's basically useless. He's never going to be able to clutch a 1v4 with the sniper in hand. Love what we saw from Dallas Empire in game two. They tie up the series one apiece. We'll be right back after this with game three domination.
haircut, dude. What am I supposed to do? Call of Duty League is brought to you by Metro by T-Mobile. Stay connected to what matters most with the best value in wireless. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's our second semi-final of Championship Sunday. And so far, it's looking like it could be a good one. Series tied one to one. Game one was a pretty close one. Chance game two, though, uh, not so much. I still, Dallas apparently have Minnesota's number in Search and Destroy. Like, make no mistake, the Rocker are very strong in Search and Destroy, but there's definitely quite a few teams that just outright beat them at, at times. And Dallas, again, 3-0 uh, against them, and they just took them down on their best map. But that, of course, means we don't have to deal with Search and Destroy for a couple <laughs> more games unless we see that game five, which may be good news for the Rocker. Who knows? And we move over to Gunrunner, I'm pretty sure, Domination, where Dallas Empire 0-2, which doesn't seem great, but I'm pretty sure they've only lost to one the Minnesota Rocker and then two phase. So how much did we really learn? And then the Rocker are two and two. And last time they played on this map, it was a nine point difference between wow, the two teams. Incredibly close. So we'll see if we get a repeat of that. Of course, uh, winner of this will meet the Florida Mutineers in today's grand final. And are ready and waiting after a great first series of the day for them. We'll see though, who will be joining them. Chess, I don't think I actually had a chance to to ask you predictions for this series uh, before we went on air. Uh, did, you, did, you, uh, did you kind of lean a particular way here? Uh, at the start of the series, I was kind of leaning towards the rocker, but I mean like 52 48. Like I was not confident in that, but once I saw the pick and bands, I figured if they can just get search and destroy maps that they're very comfortable on, which Piccadilly was one of them, but I thought the rocker were going to be in a great spot. Apparently not comfortable enough. It's obviously we saw what just happened, so I'm right back to that straight. With Alex, unfortunately, that's going to be short lived as Billy finds him and a seam. Starts off a double. Meanwhile, we've got our Rex. That's good. The brain on the first fence. The fight for B still ongoing. Finally, Dallas Empire secure control of that. And 2 to 1 flag advantage for them. Dry on assault, though, as I thought maybe you could try and overextend, put some pressure on Dallas's home flag. Not the case, but speaking of pressure, shots he's already at sea. He's going for a decap right now, and if he can stay alive, he's massive for Dallas Empire to build the lead. If he got staying alive, he can find a kill as well. Great stuff coming out of Shotzi. And this is actually one of the strangest things I've seen. While Dallas Empire are going crazy all over the map, pressure everywhere. We were watching God RX just like three events for however many seconds. Never made a move to try to do anything on that B flag and just essentially let Empire get it for free. And it was so long before we even took a gunfight. So a little bit of strange stuff. And while Empire has a little 11 point lead, and now Silly trying to make something happen towards the back side somehow. Still. Well, unfortunately, when you try to make the hard read and uh, the player you're looking for never comes. Early here is Dallas Empire looking to put pressure on C once again. Potential trip cap, of course, though. We'll see the decap over towards A. That's neutralized. And the sort of rock should be good to cap that back up. But so far in the first couple of minutes here, very impressed with what we've seen from Dallas Empire. I mean, you mentioned pacing in game two, right? And how aggressive Dallas were. Seems like we're seeing that same play style here in game three. Same time though, Assault's able to get that C flag and his job is to kill anyone from the Empire that try to make it happen. So he's got that job on one side of the map and of course the B flag fight the entire rest of the lobby is going to be trying to handle and Alex with the pistol and the help from his teammates. Rocker makes sure they can pass the B. With two minutes 48 to go, Dallas Empire with the advantage. 37 with 23 minutes ago though, attacking the B hill. This seems like a perfect time now to listen in with Dallas Empire. Presented by Astro Gate. Water, 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 water. Water trying to hop up. Yo, water, 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 water got me. He's going mid track. I'm controlling, controlling. I'm at A. I'm at A. Porter, go A. Porter, go A. Help him. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. No, I'm coming. Train. I'm coming, Rock. Where's your train dead? There's your guys. Nothing. 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 I'm blocking yeah, in. Yeah, I'm here. Boxes. They're spawning lockers. Are you? I have your half I'm in your half I'm getting out. Yeah. Oh, back force. I got him back force. Nice, nice. Three. Three. Yeah, one guy's gonna be locked. Yeah, I'm here. I'm trolling for locker. Yeah, yo, I'm still. A locker, locker. Ready there, easy. We got there. We got there. There's money locker. Watch, I got one more. I'm playing. I'm getting this neutral. I'm going B. I'm going B. Yeah, yeah. I have locker. They're pretty far. 
Yeah, they're nading me, they're nading me. Yeah, yeah. I'm on me, on me, one hey, shot, Tilly! On B, one shot, dude. I'm on this. Yo, yo, they're gonna be. Big win, big win, man. In green. In green, one shot, 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 Deport, I'm on me, I'm on me, Nerd, 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 Oh, cap it, cap it, cap it. I'm needed. I'm needed. Yeah, yeah, protect, protect the oh, wait, wait, wait. You're coming back. Wait, yo, yo, one shot, one shot. Bathroom, bathroom, bathroom. Yeah, he's in the corner. White, white, and... Oh, all good, all good. All good, all good. Yo, just... You might need to just play the nerd, nice, man. Nice, we got the nerd, we got the nerd. Okay, okay. Right, yo, they're gonna be a nerd. They're gonna be all over 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 nerd. Good stuff from Minnesota Rocker to come back into this one, especially considering how Dallas Empire started. And it's sort of like a, a battle of generals, right? You kind of figure out how you're going to deploy your resources. So you're here in Kirby 6 side as soon as all of his teammates spawn up. Do we need to send everybody to B or go to C? They make that call to Rocker. They're thinking about the exact same game. Where do they need to defend that? Where do they need to deploy their resources? And a nice little back and forth game as well. It seems like they want 15 seconds. The Empire will build themselves a small advantage. A noticeable one at that. Well, they're having about a, a 10 point lead. Yeah. He's probably happy with going into the, the second half with that lead, considering it looked like Minnesota Rocker at one point in that first half. We're going to take full control. 10 points the advantage. They head into the second half with. And uh, just to kind of talk about uh, the, the listening we heard there. The US obviously Krim kind of controlling the, the, the strategy, if you will, where to put their troops on the map. A any other key takeaways for you? Well, one thing for me, it just took me a second of like, at first I thought they were having really bad spawn recognition, and then I realized, okay, actually the comms are just yeah. a couple seconds behind <laughs> actual visual feed. I'm like, never mind. I was like, they know exactly what's going on. Okay, we're here. We're on point now. And that was the moment where I flipped and like realized, like, okay, Crip 6 and of course the entire team you know exactly where everyone's going to be coming from. They're just a, a very well trained They know exactly where they need to look. Really, they're a team that really have to beat them. They're not going to be the first off from Hoop as well. He Went into the second half at 14 and first in his first fight of the second half. He's still going to be neutral for now. As Assault looks to cherry pick a couple more. One in shot two. They will be aiming right at him. Trophy out. Assault needs help of a few teammates. He's got a Rex. He's going to try to sneak through the map. Put some pressure over towards C. Neutral the Dallas Empire home flag. And then maybe just back off. That's what he wants to say. Goddard X actually had a lot of help from his teammates right there, but you can see the decision there, just going to neutralize that C flag and try to play for the kills around it, but actually, the new trap team gets a spawn over towards the safe flag, so he's got opportunities to make plays, it just depends on where he wants to go. But his teammates get that C flag, so he's going to get set up for kills, and he does not last very long, so it takes him down. Yeah, I was say, what, normally in those situations, it's going to be a little quicker, you have to make sure you don't lose full control of the flag. Play there from Minnesota Rock and Rock, right, working out. Dallas Empire again, controlling C and B. Minnesota Rocker, though, a lot of resources here that they can collapse in on the B flag. And another thing the Empire really seems to do that. We've seen a couple teams make the mistake on the map when they have the C flag. They push up too far, they give up the spawn behind them, and then they just end up losing every flag, even if for a few moments. The only times the Empire aren't blocking that back spawn is when they're all pushed up together as a team, and that's where they're going to potentially even try to flip the spawns and go for A. If that situation is set up like right now, you have someone, anyone on the Empire sitting in the back, making sure they're blocking the spawn so it doesn't get chaotic. So again, Empire very controlled. 108 to 96, still Dallas Empire with the advantage, but Minnesota Rocker controlling A and B. Just earning more points right now, at least. Don't really expect to stay this way for the final three minutes. Empire eyeing up B once again. Keep your eyes on the map. Number three, got RX again on the bottom side. Looking to apply pressure on the Dallas Empire's home flag. He's probably going to decap and once again run away after he gets that neutral. Don't necessarily hang around and go for the capture. Just trying to be a nuisance. Try to force Dallas Empire to respect the capture pushback. A great decision for Goddard X as well. Instead of hanging around C and trying to be sneaky, he plays aggressive to try to get some kills. 
still to buy his teammates a little bit of time to get towards B. So even some Q can't just have to be flagged. He's got to get off of it and play for kills himself. But again, just good plays all over the map right now for both yep, teams. Yep, uh, and you feel from Minnesota Rucker, if Gunner X makes that play maybe one more time, you will see Elite switch back in their favor. They might be able to solidify it, but as I mentioned that, Minnesota Rocker do secure the B flag, and Illy's left trying to make a similar play to what we saw God RX do. Just on the opposite side, is he's managed to sneak behind enemy lines, and God RX isn't going to know that way. He knows someone's here hunting down. Now they get confirmation of exactly where Illy is. Unfortunately, though, he isn't able to really have too much of an effect in the points. He may be getting the kills. Finally, he falls to elsewhere. Assault already over towards C. Yeah, Ellie was trying to make the good play, but Assault was also making a good play, but Assault actually just makes his one-on-ones towards the end. His teammates do a little bit to help, so same situation. You got the Minnesota Rocker neutralizing that C flag, and then playing the kills around him, and Assault, he's got two right in front of him. He's able to find the wow. first and the second with the MP5, and he's right back on the C flag, neutralizing again, and look at his teammates over on B. This is where the Rocker are going to run away with And Assault can game. just stay alive. He doesn't necessarily even need to do anything. Someone has to catch the home, unfortunately. Him. Trim six does take him out. All Minnesota Rocker need to do now is make sure they don't get team wiped. And as I say that, three players fall. Got our X forced to get a double kill. Dallas had just spawned and ran straight to A chance. Trying to make a play at A. And again, it's Assault showing up in the kill feed, getting a lot of kills, and a seam is there for the trades as well. And they took that last ditch effort, tried to make that full send over towards the A flag, but I think they're just simply running out of time. They have one man on B, but a seam trying to deal with them. Can't do that for the Empire. 30 seconds left then. I can't do that too well. <laughs> but it's looking like it's a GG. Uh, this is definitely going to be a GG chance. And Assault mentioned him so many times in game one. Very quiet game two, disappeared, if we're honest. But, I mean, in terms of performance here, 26 and 16, he's loving the reason. And it's really not just all the kills. Yes, they're nice to play. Yes, not all getting them myself, but really just that play over towards the C flag where he has to pick up the two big kills because he managed to keep that C flag neutralized by himself long for, time. what, maybe yeah. 20, 25 seconds, whatever it's going to be. You just chipped away an extra five points from the opposition, and then he's picking up double kills. And all those players in the Empire that don't have to back off recently to assault one man disrupting the entirety of the Empire setup. His teammates get the B flag in what was a, a five, ten point game. Basically is just over with a minute left on yeah, the game. Very, very impressive stuff uh, coming out from Assault and all of Minnesota Rocker. 153, 143. They now have the advantage in the series. And again, to reiterate our game fuel keys to victory, it was about for them winning a search and destroy a realistic chance now where maybe they don't even have to go to that game five avoid search and destroys completely and this might be an interesting thing as well of just how important that map one really yeah. was because that was the only map we've seen or at least last time these two teams played that the empire beat them quite handily so it was massive for minnesota to get that out of the way early because apparently the search and destroy for dallas again pretty clean against the rocker very well prepared but this domination Went the exact same way that we saw it go last time. Last time it was a nine-point game. This time a ten. And now we're going into a hackney yard hard point where last time it was a three-point yeah. game. So you talk about the Oof. pressure being on both teams I right mean, now. As you mentioned, first series they played was close all around, really, except for the searches. And, I mean, so far it's been a repeat, a very close game number one. Not so close at game two. Crazy close game three. And if game four goes the same way, Chance, uh, we're, we're in for another fantastic semifinal. And even still, like the reason I say the pressure is on both teams, because obviously Minnesota a little bit more comfortable since they have the, the two one advantage is still that yeah, SD, scary. not ideal uh, of a situation because you're just keep getting bullied out. Like even if you're more comfortable in Arklov, because there's not a ton of strats that the Empire can really go and look at because the Rocker have only played it once. You still don't want to have to deal with that situation. So you go to Hackney Yard, hopefully give us another three-point game or draw <laughs> if somehow that'll be possible. Probably not, but I'll take it if we get yeah, it then. Not sure about that in the hard point. We've already had a draw this weekend in domination, of course. But this series, as it was really last time they played against each other, has been full of uh, heroic moments, if you will. Both teams clutching up at the right time. And it's when you have these moments, gents, it produces crazy close games. 
And, of course, if I'm looking for anyone on the Empire to step it up in the respawn, got to be Clayster in, in my mind, right? You have Assault on the flip side with the M4, putting him some serious work. And, again, Assault at times is making the big play, yes, but that first hard point, he was just comfortable. He was just allowed to do whatever he want inside the hard point, and his teammates were doing enough that the main ARs on the flip side couldn't really get any production. I think Clay, that game in the domination, only got like 12, 12 sure. kills, so he really needs to step it up. Obviously, we, we mentioned clutch moments. We mentioned how just incredibly close uh, every map seems to be between these two teams. Let's take a look now at some of those clutch moments. Now, this is it, the final push. Coming in right now. This looks like this is like what Rocker had to do to Empire, right? Like this final. Oh, they got in. Illy got in. Illy got in. Can he hit the dart? Illy got in. He finds all three. He finds all three, and they flip the spot. Oh, you've got to be kidding me! You've got to be kidding me! And they can win it here. They can win it here. So now gorillas have to track the whole way across the map. Oh God, not like this. Not like this. This is bringing me back to Empire Rocker to close oh. out LA. Now all the pressure on Gor gorillas to try and get in, get some kind of contest. So far, they're holding it. It's a big win that comes in from Hook. He's actually able to get two. They're spawning out again. There has to be some kind of contest. That's it. There's only Davis one. He's got a contest. It's He's done. not able to do it. How did Illy get That's in? likely going to be the game. That's going to be the game. They can't get there. They can't get there. That's an Empire oh Series my. win. Some home series magic for Dallas. Second yeah, it might be. It might be. God, what is it with I us? They pass these crazy, crazy hacking yards, Joe. I think it is a one-second game again. Oh my God. I think Minnesota just has to play rotation. Are they gonna notice it? Are they gonna notice it? That is the question. Or are they gonna freak out the way Seattle did? Oh, but that look, one spawns right, out. Yeah. Him. Karma spawns Karma, out. This slack this spawns out. Oh no. They gotta hold on though. They have to hold on, right? They have to hold on for for five go. seconds. Go if you're go. Now you go they, if you're rocker okay, trying to get in. Get the one. This is great for Seattle. No, no, no! no. I thought they could get enough time. They weren't able to do it. It's one thing again. Now Seattle's inside. Two forty nine. Two forty nine. Seattle won. What are these maps? <laughs> what is going on with these maps? It just kept flip flopping. Oh Every team my the other team was god! Win. They didn't have to do anything. They just put your controller down. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Game four on the horizon. We're going to have a Hackney Yard hardpoint upcoming. And uh, Chats, I, I feel like I have to ask you here. Is this where Minnesota Rock will close it out? I kind of feel that way. You are? Like, I, I can't okay. say convincingly so. I'm expecting it to be close, absolutely. But Rocker just <laughs> had the edge in, in respawn. Assault has just been too good right now. He's been on point. Had an incredible series as long as we pretend that Search and Destroy does not That's exist. That's fair. You see... Uh, Got our Rex just kind of going with the beats. He's listening to, feeling pretty good heading into this game four. Uh, for me, all five phase games uh, it's on, by the impressive. way. All five. Yeah, to the it's, it, it's impressive, right? <laughs> it looks good. It looks very good. Uh, all eyes for me, though, are going to be on Assault after being so good in game one uh, and fantastic again in game three. His reforms have been great. If he can replicate the success he had in map one, he's going to the luck of the mirror favorite. Rocker potential favorites and off the rip. They come out on top because Alex goes big and is able to pick up three. Oh, so fast. So Empire, you see they have like two players around mid map to hold down the spawn. So they'll get those, but they're not going to get yeah, that. We obviously talk every time we see this map about how important this is for uh, people who truly are. You can turn into a free money hill and pretty much get all of the time. Such an important side of the map that you want to control early on in the game. And I'm about to have that control for now. 25 seconds left. So Rocker, they don't have full hill control, but it's being hit a nice little pinch there. Two for him. Now do they have license to push forward? We have multiple kills from a couple of different players on the Rocker already. And we saw some rib. Got her at the next one to follow. What comes to numbers himself with the push is trying to come through silly though. Not a lot of teammates support on that. So Rocker will just say thank you very much. We'll take over on the first hill with a very substantial lead. And we'll take a crack at breaking through to P2. And all you're going to see them do is throw some smokes in map. Try to get some smokes through. That break. Minnesota with the nice early lead. And the Starlight Empire ready and waiting. You we'll obviously say how tough P2 can be to break. So it's an Astro Gaming listening to Minnesota Rocker and find out if they can do it. Just need this one. I got the I got one of the spawners. I got the I'll get the hot I'll get the hot 
the window, window, dead. Bottom, dead, bottom, dead. Bottom, dead. bottom, 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 Top I got one new, one new, one more new, one more new, one more new, one new, one more 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 Unit uh, against the Empire, completely outslaying their opponent right now. They've been out rotating them as well, and they broke through what seems to be an impossible hill at times. And even there, look at the kill for the Empire, get four kills, and still that remaining player still is able to pick up two. It sets the hill for just enough time for his teammates to get right back. So even when the Empire get a little bit of light, it doesn't right, Dallas now actually in a pretty good spot to, to claw their way back into this game. The final 18 seconds of time. They go their way into the rocket. They do not have spawn control though, or the final hill of our first rotation. Now I look at Clay just locking down that left side of the map. It's going to be down to his teammate Shotzi though. Make sure he has to miss it. But he will fall. He now has to rotate across the smokes around. But it's not a rocket though. They have to be quick. Pressure from a couple players, and actually, while well, they're going to start pushing through, someone on the Empire needs to grab the hill. So, Trim Six will take that hobby and actually looking for okay. kills himself. He connects, but Duke, the guy who's watching the side, is actually going to fall. Trim Six doesn't know it, but a player is able to get through. Right now, Alex is inside the hill. He's trying to hunt down Trim. But who will find the kill eventually? As soon as he's passing the hill, they know they still have to deal with one player inside. Unfortunately for him, he's able to do it. It was Shotzi that found the pick in Dallas. Start to just calm things down a little bit here. Just four seconds left, and I don't think Minnesota Rocker even going to want to try and push that far across the map now. Not at all. You already got Goddard up right side of the map. He is probably not going to leave that wall unless his teammates are able to spawn on the line. So he's going to be nice and posted again. He's the main to spawn in the future. And already you see all five of those white arrows in the rock surrounding his new one hill. All the Empire before they can even get there. Set up once again. Just keep in mind, the opening break. Yeah. And, and if Dallas aren't careful here, this game will spiral out of control. Yes, it's close to him for a second rotation. But if Rocker can get a ton of time here on the first hit and also hold the storm for P2, Dallas are going to be in a whole different world of pain. They need to break through here or at least flip the spawns. You have to make that decision one or the other. He is looking and killing everything in sight. He had two team kills before. Both of them were unfortunate. And then his cracked out on the screen. Alex Salto having an MVP like series. He's going to get dropped. An Empire just fighting tooth and nail. Just for some clearance on the hard points of three. Finally, they're able to get some time. They'll collect those final 20 seconds. And now we go back to the age old question. And the team that does not have the spawns breakthrough. <laughs> I mean, Dallas getting that final 20 seconds was so, so important. Can't emphasize it enough. We get put in just about under 10 points behind. Yes, we expect Minnesota Rockets to once again pull a little bit of a lead on this hill. We'll see, though, if Dallas can break. They, of course, will have the advantage moving on to the latter part of this hard point. Minnesota, of course, leading the series 2 to 1 to just two in a win here. We'll see them get their ticket into today's final. Direct where he's been throughout. 
seconds past 60 seconds. Waiting to see if anyone from Dallas wants to push. He'll find the first. And Hilly pushes straight through. There's number two. Nice, smart plays. Number from God RX. And, and so this is what this hill normally looks like, right? If it doesn't get there first, they just struggle and can never find it. Go for the break. But Minnesota, on the first set of rotations, they broke through in all of, what, 20 or 30 seconds? So Minnesota just well ordered on this second hill on Hack the Yard. Can often be the difference maker. Just means the Empire going to have to turn up on the remaining hills. But look yes. at those spawns already coming in. Silly went and locked down the spawn for his teammates. So Goderex is going to be. That was so smart from Silly. He was sat there ready and waiting for teammates to spawn him for about 20, 25 seconds. It happened just once. There was Goddard Rex spawn there, and they have no idea. The spawn now flipped. Just such a smart play from Minnesota Rocker and Dallas. They're going to be in such a world of pain. They need to break through here. They cannot give Minnesota Rocker an even bigger lead. And it's funny because I'm pretty sure oh, all of the Rocker come. Dallas tried yes, to make the did. same play. Yes, he, did. he did, but he got caught and he expressed his frustration. This time, Silly makes sure he gets Goddard Rex there. And Empire were so close because they did find Silly and kill him, but not before Goddard Rex spawned in. So Empire nearly on the ball. So the Rocker just a little bit too. And honestly, even though Minnesota Rocker not getting the time here, they're preventing Dallas from getting any time whatsoever as Assault hits the double beat down onto Shotzi. The final 10 seconds of that hill, essentially irrelevant. Minnesota Rocker ready and waiting in new. Assault, that's my MVP. He's got trophies out, he's got kills all over the map, and he's got perfect transitions. He even got RX aiming with that M4. I didn't even realize it's like a face to the wall, but you don't get the kills on the top, so make sure you hit him down low. The Rocker now just 34 points for MVP. Oh, look! I think he was shooting at Goddard Rex. He tried to pre-fire the scene, just turns and burns inside the hill. Speaking of the hill, currently contested. The Minnesota Rocker looking to just have one more clean wipe. Close it out here. Don't even send it to a game five. 223, 149 again. Dallas scrambling towards the hill. But again, Minnesota Rocker not letting them get close. Goddard Rex in the scene. Inside that hill, just the hyper aggression, but the Empire fighting, fighting strong. It looks like the Rocker making the decision. We will avoid putting the pressure and overcommitting on this hill. We will take our time. All those players backing up towards yellow, making sure they get the perfect setup they want for the next one. Because of course, 22 seconds in the game and series. Elite in such an important spot here for Dallas. He has so much work to do. You've got to wait. You've got to be patient, but at the same time, finding one or two kills is so so important. There's the first, but unfortunately, he will fall from the side. Hook, I believe he's going to be closest to the hill for Dallas. You have 10 seconds to try and save this game, or Minnesota Rocker are going to a grand final. It's a scene up top, waiting for players to cross. Falls to Illy. Can he even get close to the hill? Two seconds left. The contest finally comes through. There's the trade. The first. Can he find the second? No, he can't. Falls to Krim. Clay breaks in with two seconds left. But bear in mind, now you need to hold every single second of this. If you're Dallas and you have to worry about the rotation, we are talking about flawless gameplay here. And if you're Minnesota Rocker, you can last second push if you really want. And of course, have the safety blanket of rotating early. You got him hunted down though. Hugh is looking for him. They know Goddard is here, and Goddard is the final man. He gets dealt with, but he just dragged three players from the Empire towards the middle to make that happen. And look at all the air to the Rocker. They're set up in new, and Empire, they just do not have I don't the think time. they're going to get even closer. Sultz inside the new hill when it pops. No one's going to touch it. Minnesota Rocker take the game 250 to 196. They take the series 3 to 1. Congratulations to them. They're heading to a grand final. Headed to the grand final and in a hell of a fashion. I don't know who you give the MVP to, but Assault is absolutely in that conversation. You just go and look at the KDs and the respawn from the ARs on both sides of the table. The Rocker obliterated the Empire in that series. Great stuff coming out of them. And even just that particular map, just there on Hack in the Yard. Again, one of the key moments is can you break through on that P2 hill? The Rocker executed it almost flawlessly. The Empire didn't get anywhere close to it. So other than that, all things equal, it's a close game. But those little moments that the Rocker, again, are just so good at as a team. And that's the key, right? We, we talk about Minnesota Rocker and their fundamentals. We give often a lot of credit to the backroom staff, the, the, the coaches there. 
I, I mean, they have the little things just fine tuned so perfectly. You, you mentioned, of course, in the in the first listening we went to, you saw Alex try and make the same play Silly did uh, on the rotation from P2 to P3 across the map. It didn't work out, but you could see the attempt. And then one whole rotation later, you see it work out perfectly. And the effect that had was not only did they have a money hill, but they canceled any possible time that Alice Empire could get on P3. It was just beautiful to watch. And of course, credit to the Empire in that situation because they read it both times. Unfortunately for them, the second time, again, got our X spawn in just a moment before Silly dies. So Empire, they know what's up. They know the game as well. But when it comes down to it, that toe-to-toe, -to -toe, they didn't even have the slang uh, against the Rocker in that situation. So congratulations. Our grand final has been Perhaps. set up and both teams are going to be looking for their yes, first they team. will. Who is going to take that exciting, of course, that still to come following uh, this, of course, uh, Florida ready and waiting to, to see who they were going to be playing i'm sure they watched that entire series of course the answer now minnesota rocker after a fantastic performance there against dallas they take the series three to one we'll be right back with more cdl after this